Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me for today's Empowering Mobile Users webinar, where we're going to focus on why it might make sense to extend your solutions past the desktop, and then we'll jump into a quick 20 to 30 minute demo showcasing how we can leverage the FileMaker platform to quickly address a common mobile task. Now, this webinar is designed for those of you new to the FileMaker platform, but keep in mind we will be utilizing some beginner advanced techniques in the demo portion. But first, let's spend about three to four minutes on some brief housekeeping notes and talk about some of the mobile trends in the workplace. So for the best experience, it is strongly recommended that you participate in this webinar with at least a broadband connection. So if you have any problems or require online assistance at any time, please contact Citrix Technical Support at 888-259-8414. Now throughout today's presentation, you're going to have the opportunity to type in and ask questions. So let's talk briefly about how to do that. Just go to the control panel, click on the question section, enter your question and click on send. Now we'll try to answer as many as time allows at the end of our presentation, but remember, you don't need to wait until then to submit a question. So the FileMaker platform is a full line of products that give you all the tools you need to create a custom map that transforms your business in or out of the office. So what does the platform look like? Well, to start, you have FileMaker Pro Advanced, and that's used to create your apps on a Mac or Windows machine. And then when you're ready to share your solutions with your team, well, you just upload them to FileMaker Server. This is a software application that you can install on a dedicated machine, and it provides the connectivity, the security, the reliability, and the performance that you would expect as you, in a sense, manage your own cloud. Now, at this point, the first group you're sharing the solution with is typically the immediate work group in the office. So for your everyday users or the users you expect to be constantly logged into the file making heavy changes to data, they're going to have a copy of FileMaker Pro on their desktop, and they're going to use that to log into your hosted solutions. But as we'll discuss, and which I'm sure you're aware, the demand for mobile access has risen. So how can your remote users access your FileMaker hosted data? Well, for your iOS users, FileMaker Go is a fantastic option. We believe that iOS offers the best mobile experience, and we truly believe that FileMaker Go offers the best experience on iOS. And FileMaker Go allows you to access your hosted solutions on an iPad, iPhone, or even an iPod Touch. Additionally, FileMaker's WebDirect feature is a low-code, no-code option that provides web browser access to your hosted solutions from a desktop, mobile tablet, or phone web browser. That's right, you don't need to know how to code HTML, CSS, or PHP. FileMaker will automatically render the layouts to the web for you, and it's available for both iOS and non-iOS tablets and phones. So you're given all of the database tools you need to design a better business workflow and a full suite of applications to design a better workplace. So why do companies gravitate toward FileMaker as a strategic mobile option? Well, to fully answer that question, let's take a quick look at the current mobile workforce landscape. A recent Citrix article noted that 61% of workers reported working outside of the office at least part of the time, and who here isn't guilty of at least checking their work email on their phone, right? But it makes sense. With the amount of smartphones and tablets being shipped and bought each year, consumers literally transform their personal lives, and these mobile expectations have been shifting towards the workplace. And that rise of mobile technology in the workforce has been widely documented. In fact, according to the Citrix-sponsored Workplace of the Future Global Survey, 91% of respondents plan to have a mobile strategy, with 82% estimated to have implemented one by this time. And of course, mobile solutions are integral to a mobile strategy. A CIO article ported to one Hyperion survey, noting that 70% of respondents plan to equip 1,000 users with mobile apps, and a third of those respondents had plans to deploy 5,000 mobile users by 2016. But businesses aren't just looking for any downloadable app that's out there that may or may not fit their needs. Hyperion's Mobile Enterprise Application Survey found that the leading strategy for mobile adoption by IT leaders is creating their own apps to address core business problems. So companies are aware of this trend, they're embracing it, but challenges do exist. So what factors can lead to the suspension or closure of a mobile project? 
Well, a big variable to any company just like yours is time and cost. Now, Kinvee's CIO and Mobile Leader State of Enterprise Mobility Survey noted that 76% of the CIO respondents wanted to reduce costs and they wanted to increase productivity for their teams while also creating new revenue opportunities. But they also felt that the mobile app development is costly, it's slow, and it's frustrating. 56% of respondents noted that it takes seven months to a year just to build an app. And we're not even talking about training or adoption or deployment here. And then more than half are paying over $100,000 for an app that they may or may not get off the ground. It's not surprising then that the leading factor for the inability to advance their mobile strategy was lack of budget. And remember how we discussed that IT managers were looking to build their own apps? Well, Coney's Enterprise Mobile Application Report notes that 71% of respondents expect IT to manage these apps. So IT is being expected to step up and extend their traditional support and performance monitoring to these new mobile projects. Their conclusion is a disconnect between aspirations and capabilities. So while they view the role of the IT team as important, a burdened IT team may cause the mobile strategy to fall into unplanned development actions, resulting in the perusal of other infrastructure strategies. And let's also note that a lot of you may not even have the luxury of an IT team to lean on for assistance and guidance with more complex software. But if the larger companies are feeling the pressures of these challenges, we can only assume the impact these obstacles create on medium and smaller sized companies that have even less resources available to them like some of you today, right? This is what makes the FileMaker platform attractive. Because to solve mobile workforce problems, companies will look to apps that you can easily download and install, but customizing them is extremely difficult, if at all possible. And then by using traditional tools, well, companies can get a solution to do exactly what they want, but as we discussed, this can be a very time-consuming and costly project. And then just maintaining that solution can be costly as well. But FileMaker is an excellent alternative that makes it easy to create custom maps that cost-effectively bring together all needed information, quickly streamlines business processes, and can easily be updated and deployed across different devices and platforms. But don't just let me tell you. Let's take a look at FileMaker's recent State of the Custom Map report. Remember how we discussed lengthy projects and over-reliance on IT? Well, 52% of respondents noted that they built a solution in less than three months. And 93% of respondents noted that they helped build or built one or more FileMaker custom apps in their business. Again, FileMaker allows teams with limited IT resources to do custom development. And this short length of time and hands-on approach hasn't affected the quality of their workflows. 74% of respondents saw increase in productivity for an average of a 60% boost in production levels, while 81% saw a reduction in inefficient tasks. So they're achieving their goals, but they're also getting more done in the same amount of time. And then 60% of respondents saw a return on investment with 20% equaling two times the original investment. So it's a result you want at less cost and better flexibility. And companies have been using FileMaker to build fantastic apps that capture some of the same things that you want to capture, but in a way that makes sense to their unique business workflow. So what do some of these solutions look like? Let's take a look. A private airline in France, well, they use FileMaker-based solution for their airplane maintenance process and stock management. Servibar, makers of famous hotel guest room refrigerators, they use a solution to report and view critical maintenance issues from anywhere in the hotel. Globenet System Inc. has created a customer management sales management system with an iOS front end that provides features such as registration of new customers, unpaid or paid item information, and calculation of total sales. World famous Arturo Montero takes his solution to the field to capture data and record archaeological sites and caves in real time. Valley Oxygen uses a medical sales system allowing medical device sales reps out in the field to track clients and managers while monitoring their sales goals. And Braun Electric has improved job safety by digitizing their job safety analysis process. So it used to be a binder full of pages, and now their field team can access safety recommendations and risk assessments just one click away in the field. So six unique mobile business workflows all built on the same FileMaker platform. The possibilities of mobile solutions are virtually endless. But by now I'm sure you're thinking, okay, 
I get all the statistics, the examples look great, but can I really deploy a mobile solution that tackles some tasks without diving deep into months and months of coding? Well, the best way to answer that is to show you. And to help frame today's demo, let's assume that we're part of a sales team for an emerging auto parts reseller, and one of our biggest sources of income are the automotive trade shows that we're constantly traveling to and participating in. And one of our biggest sources of pain is the quoting process. Now, just to take a step back for a second, the use case for our app isn't particularly important because we're going to be covering techniques and methodologies that apply to all FileMaker solutions. But again, our main goal today is to quickly create and deploy a solution to our mobile users. Now, back to FM Auto Parts. So there's a lot of work that goes into these trade shows. The process for just planning and prepping for one is very time consuming. And when it comes to the promoting, selling, and quoting on the floor, we're certainly not making it easier on ourselves. Pretty much all day we're on our feet. We're dealing with information scattered across multiple sheets of paper. So we'll have a stack of printed inventory lists that we'll hand out to customers, another stack of quote forms, and some spreadsheets of inventory and customer information that we use to update and capture data. And our quoting process typically looks like the following. So when somebody comes by to chat with us at our booth, we'll take a sheet from the inventory stack for him or her to review. And hopefully by the end of the day, we don't run out of these brochures, which has happened a few times. But the alternative is overprinting and wasting money on paper that almost immediately out of date after each show. But if they're interested, we'll manually build out a quote cross-referencing our inventory spreadsheet each time to verify availability, and we'll calculate on the fly an estimated cost while the customer patiently waits. We'll then hand the clipboard over to the customer who will write in their contact information, and once we've given the customer a, a copy of the form, we're kind of hoping they don't lose their copy and that their handwriting is legible for follow-up processes. Next, we'll take out the inventory spreadsheet and we'll manually update the list to reflect any changes. And for the most part, we're pretty accurate, but when our booth gets really busy, we do sometimes miss items to update, which causes additional work down the line. But when we get back into the office, which could be days or a few weeks depending on our trade show schedule, we or the admin in the office will manually re-enter that information into an existing system and we'll file away the uh, forms as well. And then when it's time for our next trade show, well, we'll head out to the local print shop to print out the inventory brochures, quote forms, and the spreadsheets to start the process all over again. So we do get the job done. It's just a very time consuming process and we're not working with real time data. Now, let's go ahead and assume our boss is well, let me go ahead and just choose someone from our attendees list here. And, um, okay, today we'll say that Kathy is our boss. Now, Kathy knows that at every show, we're losing customer opportunities because of our paper-based process. And once the data is collected, we're spending way too many wasted cycles on inefficient processes, and it's costing our company a lot of time and money. And that's when I get called into her office. Now, Kathy knows there has to be a more effective way to empower our mobile users, and she wants the following. We need the, sales, the field sales team to be able to access information in real time wherever they are. Now, Kathy's also tired of putting dead money into apps that can only do half of what we need and lengthy projects that have failed to get off the ground. So she wants to make sure we're able to capture the workflow that makes sense to us, and it's also going to make her jobs out, easier out in the field. She also wants the customer experience to be better too as we help speed up the sales cycle. And finally, she wants to be able to better utilize these iPads that we've purchased for the sales team but haven't really found a way to effectively leverage in our process. Now, that's a lot of moving parts and with the tools I've just been given, I know I'm in for a long string of weeks or months of head working on this project and it's just not even a good day for me even to start thinking about the project. It's close to the end of the day on Friday. I'm headed out to another show, and if I don't leave soon, I'm going to be sitting in additional hours and hours of traffic, um, adding um, time to my trip. But that's when I remember FileMaker. And the first thing I need to do is make sure I can actually build something that our team can access out in the field. So I'm going to create a brand new database file. I'm going to configure appropriate access in my solution, host it with FileMaker server, and then connect to that solution via FileMaker Go and WebDirect. So let's go ahead and talk about how we do that. Now, there's a lot of different ways to get started building in FileMaker. 
But what I'm going to do is launch the FileMaker Pro Advance I have on my machine, and we're going to go ahead and just create a brand new solution. Let's go ahead and give this a name. Now, I am using a uh, Mac, but these are the same steps that you're going to follow if you want to start building on a Windows machine as well. Now, we're immediately taken into what we call um, layout mode, and this is where you can design the look and feel or the interface of your solution. And you can create as many layouts as you want. So let's go ahead and create a brand new layout. I'm going to give this a name. Uh, we'll give this, uh, we'll call this code details here as well. And in this layout wizard, we can choose, all right, what is the layout dimension going to be built for? Is it going to be built for a uh, desktop? Uh, maybe you want to build a layout for envelopes or some reporting, labels. Again, we have a team out in the field, and we know that we want to make a layout design for uh, the iPad. So let's go ahead and select iPad here. We'll choose a build out some form, and I'll choose a landscape orientation. So what happened? Well, we got a layout design to the iPad in a landscape orientation, and we're also given a theme. Now, there's 61 themes in FileMaker. They're fully um, customizable, so you can modify them, edit them however you want. And you'll notice that some of these are marked as touch. If we take a look at the difference, enlightened to enlightened touch, sophisticated to sophisticated touch, the touch themes have the larger fonts and the larger objects like you'd expect on an iOS device, perfect for what we want to do. So we'll stick with this enlightened touch, okay? Now, uh, the next thing I'm going to do, uh, we have this blank canvas for us to work on. I love to add a title to this layout. So I'm going to add some literal text, and we'll just say the name of our company, okay? Uh, FileMaker Auto Parts, all right? Now, I do have a logo of our company. I love to have that appear on every single record here in the layout. So let's go ahead and drag that logo right onto our layout. And you're going to hear me say that a lot uh, today, just dragging and dropping. So we drag and drop that image uh, right onto our layout, and it's now going to appear on every single record, just like we want a great way for us to begin extending our brand. At this point, we probably want to add some information on our layout. And in FileMaker, information is stored in what we call fields. And we have this fantastic tool called the Field Picker, which is going to allow us to create some fields for this particular table and add them to our layout. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click on this new field button. We probably want to capture uh, the rep, who's the sales rep, that is uh, building out uh, this quote. Uh, we probably want to capture the date. And I'm going to change the default type from a text to a date field. And I also want to make sure that every quote that we're building is unique. So I'm going to create a um, ID field here. We'll just call this quote ID. All right. And I'm going to change that back to a text. And then I'm going to control click or right click if you're on Windows to bring up the field options. And we have a calculation uh, function that will automatically generate a a unique ID, it's this get UUID function. Okay, so we'll just leverage that. So uh, anytime a new record is created, we'll automatically have a, a calculation value um, entered for us. All right, now how do we get these fields over onto the layout? Well, just like we talked about previously, we're just going to drag and drop. So let's go ahead and highlight these fields. We'll make sure that it's coming out horizontally. We'll put the labels above and we'll drag and drop it right onto our layout. That easy. What do you say we take a look at our changes? I'm going to exit this layout, and I'm going to enter what we call browse mode. This is where you can interact with the layouts that you design and create. So I'm going to create a brand new record, and I'm going to enter uh, a name here. And just like that, we are working with a, a solution that we created. Now, there's a lot of paths that we could take here. Um, you know, we could start adding some security to this file. You know, we could start locking down who can log into the file. Uh, we could create some privilege sets specifying what they can do in the file once they've logged in. But I don't want to dive too deep into development. Again, we're tired of burning money on apps and solutions that don't do exactly what we want to do. So if I can't prove that I can get this over onto an iPad or a web browser quickly and easily, then it's not going to be worth it to me to continue uh, spending time on this particular project. So how do I get this over onto an iPad? That's a great question. And the first thing I need to do is share this solution with FileMaker Server. So let's go up to the Share button. I'll select Upload to FileMaker Server. Okay. And again, what is FileMaker Server? It is a software application that runs the services in the background of your machine. It hosts your files. It provides the security, the performance, and the reliability that you want, again, in a server software. All right, so I've sent this uh, file up to the FileMaker Server. 
And you'll notice in parentheses that it says my FileMaker server machine at the top, just giving us an indication that we're now accessing a hosted file. So again, that's great. We're accessing it via the desktop FileMaker Pro. How do we get that over onto an iPad? Well, in order to show you, I'm going to launch this Reflector app. And Reflector just allows me to airplay the iPad Air I have in my hands over onto the screen. So give me one second to do that. Okay, and I am selecting my computer right now. And there is the iPad Air I have in my hands. I'm going to tap on FileMaker Go. That's free to download off of the App Store. And down at the bottom, you'll see three icons that we have. Uh, the recent icon shows the recent databases that I've accessed. If I tap on the device icon, this shows databases that are stored locally on this iOS device. Now, why is that important? Well, my field team is not always guaranteed a working network connection, if any network connection at all, when they're out in the field. So in their scenarios, what I can do is store a local copy of the database on this iOS device. I can um, uh, open it up, add some records, make some changes, and then push those changes to the hosted file when I do have a network connection. Speaking of hosted files, if I tap on that third icon, Hosts, this is where I can uh, access um, FileMaker software that's hosting databases on the local area network, or I can enter an IP address of a remote machine. So here is my FileMaker server, okay, and you can see that quote details uh, database that we created towards the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and tap on that. And there is our solution. Again, it's not the most beautiful solution in the world. We can work on that. Uh, it's not the most complex uh, app in the world. We can certainly work on that as well. But uh, what I want to think about right now is just how much time it would take using traditional tools just to get to this point. We don't have to recode our solution to make it iOS available. FileMaker will handle that for us. And if we wanted to make some changes, let's go ahead and we'll change that name. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and tap out and commit that record. Let's take a look back in our FileMaker Pro. And just like that, we have that change. We're already solving some of those limitations working in spreadsheets. Again, think about a spreadsheet spread across our entire sales team. We're not getting information in real time. Again, no additional coding to get this uh, to work from a desktop to a uh, mobile device. Now, what about a web browser? Well, let's go ahead and close or hide this um, iOS device for now. And in order to set this up for the web, first thing I need to do is make sure that we have appropriate permissions to access the solution via a web browser. So I'm going to go to File, Manage Security, okay? And this is where you can set security within the file. We kind of talked about it really briefly where we talked about creating accounts or who can log into the file and then creating privilege sets or what uh, the users are allowed to do once they're in the file. Uh, there's another set of privileges and that we can specify. Uh, these extended privileges just specify how a user can access your solution via a specific technology. So uh, whether if the file is hosted, can they access it via the desktop or access it via FileMaker Go? And what we're about to do right now is specify whether a user can access this via a web browser. So I'm going to select the FM Web Direct privilege. And I'm just going to specify that the account that we're currently using, the admin, is able to access uh, this solution uh, when it's enabled via this technology. Okay, so the solution is ready. Let's go ahead and open up a web browser. All right, and there's a specific URL you go to. It involves the IP address of the host machine, forward slash FMI, forward slash WBD, short for WebDirect. And this lands you to the default um, WebDirect homepage. You can actually edit your own custom homepage. But there's that quote details uh, database that we were working with. I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on that. All right, and there is the solution that we uh, created. All right, again, not the most uh, complex or beautiful uh, web page you've ever seen. But again, think about what we'd have to do just to get this point uh, using traditional tools uh, in the web, coding the HTML, coding the CSS to get the different uh, colors here and specifying where we want the fields to appear and adding images. Again, FileMaker will automatically handle this for us. There's no additional coding to get to this point. And just like the web browser, if we are just like the FileMaker Go, if we make a change in the rep, um, uh, change name, if we go back into FileMaker Pro, you can see that a change automatically appear.
And again, if we look at side by side, you can see that the web browser and the FileMaker Pro desktop, it's as close to high fidelity as you can get between the two. Um, again, no additional coding necessary. So in terms of, or in the interest of time, we're probably going to step out of the web browser. Uh, we'll focus more on the desktop and the FileMaker Go pieces. But again, I just wanted to show you uh, what we were able to achieve uh, using the FileMaker platform and how quickly we were able to do that, again, just using our FileMaker skills. Okay, so what did we do? Well, we created a brand new database. We made sure the accounts had appropriate access. We hosted our solution with FileMaker Server, and then we connected to it via FileMaker Go and a web browser. Really simple stuff, guys. So we're already starting to solve some of the limitations of staying in spreadsheets and paper with real-time updates. So time spent performing double entry can now be spent toward achieving more goals throughout the day. All right, so I'm feeling really good about our progress, but the clock is still ticking, and I need to make sure I can incorporate our business needs into the solution. Again. Kathy is tired of wasting money on software and apps that has us force-fitting our business into their sandbox. So I'm going to use features like the field picker, importing, relationships, portals, and calculations to create a workflow that makes sense to us. So let's talk about how we do that. All right, we're going to be making some layout changes and some schema changes, and that means we're going to be working within the FileMaker Pro Advanced desktop software. Okay, Anytime you need to make those layout and database schema changes, it's always going to be in your FileMaker Pro Advanced uh, product. Now, before we start diving into um, uh, developing a workflow in here, let's think about the features that we like to add from our previous process. Now, we did have that inventory spreadsheet, and I'd love to have a way for users to view that list directly in this solution and, and have the ability to kind of scroll through. Well, in order to make that happen, the first thing I need to do is import that spreadsheet into my FileMaker solution. So let's go up to the File menu, select Import Records, and then we'll browse to the inventory spreadsheet. It's here on my desktop. Okay. And it makes sense to have the inventory live in its own table, so we'll tell FileMaker import all this data into a brand new table. Okay. Just like that, we have a brand new import table, we have a brand new import layout, and we have uh, about 25 records here. I'm going to view this record in what FileMaker, um, FileMaker calls table view. Okay, So it's kind of like a spreadsheet-like view, but FileMaker calls this table view. Now I also have images that I'd love to appear in every single inventory uh, record, but I need to add a uh, field because I don't have a field right now that can hold a uh, media file. So let's jump back into layout mode, okay? And we'll jump back into the field picker and we know how to add fields. So we'll go ahead and create a new field. Uh, we'll just call this photo, all right? And I'm gonna change that field type from a text to a container. Now a container field is, it stores pretty much any media file. So sound files, movie files, document files, uh, PDF files, all of that is stored in a container field type. Okay, so there's our photo field. Here's our images. Let's go ahead and start dragging and dropping a few of these images right into um, the appropriate record. Okay, so it's that simple. Now, I have 25 records here and uh, 25 images. Not that big of a deal to uh, drag and drop all of these into the records, but if you're working with you know hundreds of records, thousands of records, you probably don't want to have to do a drag and drop for every single one. That's okay. There's a way to import a folder of images right into FileMaker. Now in the interest of time, we're not going to um, drag and drop every single record here, just the first five is okay. Now what I want to do at this point is get this inventory information to appear on this quote layout. Now when you want information to appear from one table onto a layout that's pulling information from a different table, the first thing you need to do is create a relationship between those tables. And where do you do that? There's a lot of different ways to get to this window, but I'm going to go to File, Manage, Database. And this is where you can build on the back end of your file or the schema of your file. So you can create tables. You can create fields associated with those tables. And then the real power of FileMaker, you can create relationships between those tables. Now, how do you create a relationship? Well, the first thing you want to do is find fields that have um, common values. In this scenario, we don't really have any fields that really match, maybe the ID field. So let's create a relationship between those two, all right? 
Um, right now, we are saying that uh, if the values in the two ID fields um, uh, equal each other based off this operator, share those records. Okay, so let's assume that uh, the quote ID and the inventory ID are both serialized fields. Okay, so record one is one, record two is two, record three is three. If we have it set up this way with this type of relationship, we're saying, hey, FileMaker, any record in the inventory list table that has a value one, share it with the first quote. Any record in the inventory list that has a, a value two, share it with the second quote, so on and so forth. Now, in terms of what we want to do, creating a list, um, that means that for every quote that we have, based off this type of relationship, we'd have to have an equal amount of records with that same value, so that same uh, quote ID one or same quote ID two, um, to match. Uh, a full comprehensive list for each uh, quote ID uh, record. That means we could have you know hundreds and hundreds of duplicate records in our inventory table, uh, not the most ideal situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the um, relationship operator here from an equal sign to this X sign. This is a Cartesian relationship. And this is essentially telling FileMaker, I don't care what the values are, just share everything. Uh, between the two tables, okay? So it's perfect for a list type of workflow that we want to uh, create, okay? So we have that uh, relationship uh, set up now between the two. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now how do we get that information displayed on our layout? Let's jump into the layout mode. And we have this great tool called a portal. And a portal just allows you to display uh, related records from a related table, okay? So I'm going to say allow vertical scrolling and scrolling and we'll say uh, the number rows four. Now what information do we want to show from the inventory list? Um, we want the photo, we want the item, cost, description, pretty much we want all these rec um, fields here. Okay. So now we'll do some light formatting. Okay. I'm just going to make this photo uh, field a little bit larger. And this is just a good glimpse of how you would build your layouts in FileMaker. Okay. You're just adding fields. And then you are just aligning them however um, appropriate for your business workflow. Okay. I'm going to do one uh, additional line of formatting for this cost field. Okay. I'm going to make sure that uh, right now it's a number field. So I want to make sure that it is uh, formatted as a currency. Okay. So let's go ahead and exit the layout, take a look at our changes. And just like that, in our portal, uh, there's every single inventory list item. Okay, again, uh, based off the relationship we created, everything matches everything. Okay, so again, perfect for what we want to achieve in this list-like view. And it's not just this first quote. If we click on a new record to create a brand new quote, you can see that the list here appears as well. All right, so we have a nice structure for the inventory list um, here. Let's think about what else we'd like to capture. Um, we have a spreadsheet of customer information. I'd love to just capture customer information here uh, within the tool so we could view that information in real time. Um, and since we have a list of the inventory here, I'd love to build out a quote uh, based off of the list uh, within uh, this tool as well. Now, we have some space to work with here, but let's jump into layout mode and we'll take advantage of this tool called a tab control and it allows us to leverage the space that we do have left on our um, uh, layout, okay? So we'll create a, a tab called quote and I'll create another tab called customer. All right, and we'll do a full justification. And the way it works is you place objects and fields on the tab and uh, they can only be um, interacted with when you click on the appropriate tab. All right. Now, what I'd like to do at this point, I'm going to go ahead and close this file out, and I'm going to open up a second file that I created in the interest of time again. All right. So it's the same thing. We have the inventory list here in the portal. I just added additional images. Okay. And um, I added some fields for uh, the customer information. Okay. So if I jump back into layout mode and jump into our field picker, you can see all of the customer fields that we created. Again, we know how to create fields now, and uh, we just wanted to save some time here um, so we can jump into other areas of this tool. All right, so we have the customer info tool, uh, our tab built out. Let's focus on the quote, okay? So our goal, again, is to select items from the inventory list and build out a quote. And 
To get started, we, what did we learn last time? When you want to uh, display information from uh, a table on a layout that's pulling information from a different table, you have to create a relationship between those tables, right? So let's go back to File Manage Database, okay? We're here in our Relationships tab. Now, the inventory table is already being used to create that inventory list, okay? But that's all right. You can create multiple logical instances of a table so you can create different types of relationships uh, to that table. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, select Command D or Control D if you're on Windows. We now have a logical instance of that uh, table. Okay, right now it's called Inventory List 2. And I'm just going to rename this, uh, we'll call it Order Inventory so it stands out a little bit more. Okay, this is what we're going to build orders with. All right, now we're going to fall, if we create a relationship between this order inventory and uh, the quote uh, table, we're going to fall into the same pitfalls and traps um, that we talked about previously, okay? Um, if we wanted to build out a quote for quote one, for example, we're telling FileMaker any record in the order inventory table that has a value one, um, share it with the first quote, any record that has a value uh, two, share it with the second quote. So we're, um, we're susceptible to having uh, duplicates and duplicates of inventory records in this table, which is what we don't want. We want each record to be unique. So what we're going to leverage, and here's some of those beginner advanced techniques that we talked about uh, in the beginning of our demo. We're going to leverage a, a third table, what we call a join table, to create essentially a many-to-many -many relationship. And you can learn more about this in FileMaker's knowledge base and look up uh, creating many-to-many -many relationships. So I'm going to call this third table orders, okay, and the, the name is arbitrary. But this is what we're going to uh, designate our join table. And we're going to do the same thing where we want to make sure that every um, record in the order table is unique. Okay, so we're going to make sure that uh, a unique value is generated here. And then I'm going to create another field. Um, we'll call it a quote ID so I can create a relationship to the quote table. And then a inventory ID so I can create a relationship to the inventory table. All right, so now back on our relationships tab, let's go ahead and create a quote. Okay, we have this equal operator in between. All right, now in the orders table, we're saying, okay, FileMaker, anytime that there's a record in the orders table that has a value one, share it with the first quote. Any record that has a value two in the quote ID, share it with the second quote, so on and so forth. And those individual records in the orders table, they could be referencing a different inventory item. So if the uh, first record has an inventory ID 10, grab the 10th uh, 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 inventory item. If the uh, second record in the orders table has a value 8, grab the 8th um, uh, item in the uh, inventory table. Okay, So we can have all of those instances, all those multiples uh, records that are being referenced in the orders table, just making sure that all of the quote uh, records are unique and also ensuring that the inventory records are unique as well. Again, this is a many-to-many -many relationship. We're using what we call a join table here, and you can learn more about how to set this up in FileMaker's knowledge base, creating a many-to-many -many relationship. Okay. So one thing I want to do before we save uh, our changes, I'm going to jump back into the orders table because there's some information that we want to capture. So for example, for each order, uh, we want to know what's the quantity uh, for the inventory item that we're going to be purchasing. We'll make that a number. okay? Then I want to capture uh, the subtotal for each uh, order. You can think of this as kind of like the line items in the quote or uh, an invoice. okay? And I'm going to make this a uh, calculation. Uh, field type, and the calculation result is going to be quantity uh, times the order inventory cost. Okay, that's a number, perfect. And then I want to capture a total for the uh, quotes in its entirety. Now, I could use a calculation, but it's going to be easier just to use a uh, summary field type. It's going to go ahead and create. I'm going to tell FileMaker, grab the total of the subtotals for each of those records all right now let's add that information onto our layout all right uh, we're going to jump into this portal you know that uh, portals uh, allow us to display related information from uh, a related record so it's going to be pulling information from the orders table 
All right, we'll say uh, six rows, that's fine. Now, what fields do we want to add? Okay, so you want to capture the inventory ID. That's going to allow us to create a relationship to the inventory table. We want to capture the order inventory uh, item. We'll capture the uh, cost. Then we'll capture the uh, quantity and then the subtotal. All right, so let's go ahead and click OK. Here's all of our fields. And let's just do some uh, quick formatting to uh, bring this out here. All right, quantity can be a little bit smaller and the subtotal will make just a little bit larger. Okay, uh, we'll do some formatting here as well. Again, this is a number and we want to make sure that it's specified as uh, currency. Thousand separator here, and same thing, thousand separator here as well. All right, and we'll bring over the uh, total field onto our layout. Okay, now you may notice these blue lines that appear, and these are what we call dynamic guides. They just help you quickly align the objects that you you have on your layout. There's nothing that you need to do to um, uh, set this up. It's just right out of the box. It's there just to help you as a, a guiding uh, feature. All right, now uh, just some quick formatting here. I'm going to add uh, some labels, okay? And I'm gonna do a Command D or Control D if you're on a Windows to duplicate that label just to save some time from having to uh, rename or recreate these labels. Okay, cost, and then we have um, quantity, and then we have the subtotal here. All right, so let's go ahead, exit the layout, all right? And now there's one ad, uh, additional feature I wanna do. I wanna go, okay, we built out the portal, but I'm gonna go back into File Manage Database, okay? And I'm gonna go into the Relationships tab and uh, click on the uh, relationship between quote and orders, okay? So there's one additional piece I wanna do is I wanna uh, tell FileMaker that uh, from this relationship, I want to give the ability to allow, uh, allow me to create records uh, based off of uh, this relationship, okay? Now, why is that important? It's important because now you can interact with that portal. So you can create records directly through this portal, which means you're creating new records to um, the orders table in this scenario. So I'm gonna tell FileMaker, all right, uh, I'm looking at the different uh, list of inventory items here. Oh, you know what? I need some gear shifts for uh, my um, store. All right, so that's an ID of 10, okay? So we're gonna enter that in there. You see it's a gear shift, and there's the cost. I'm gonna say that, you know, I wanna order 15 of these for my store, all right? We'll get 900, all right. Uh, let's do some quick formatting here. Why is this showing a little bit a question mark? We're just not giving this enough room, okay? You know, we'll make the ID a little bit smaller. It looks like that 10 got caught off there as well. All right, so we'll exit that layout. Okay, we see the ID, we can see the quantity there. Um, let's say that uh, we also want some alternators for the uh, shop as well. Okay, so that's an ID two. There's the alternator, there's the cost, and we'll say that we wanna purchase eight of these for the store. Okay, so we're building out that quote. You can see uh, the total is automatically updating as, as well. So it's working just like we wanted on the desktop. How does it look on the iOS device? Well, let's go ahead and uh, take a look. Again, give me one second to airplay this over onto my screen via the uh, Reflector app. Okay. So give me one second to do that and connect. All right, and there is the iPad Air I have in my hands. Now, right now we're looking at the uh, previous file that we were working with, so let's close that, all right? And let's open up that quote to file that we just created. All right, there it is, the uh, 15 gear shifts and the eight alternators that we just added. Um, let's say that he wants to add some car batteries to uh, uh, his uh, quote as well. So this is a uh, item three, okay? There's the car battery and he wants uh, seven of these. Okay, this is gonna be great for our business. And again, you can see it automatically update that subtotal and the total automatically 
update as well. And if we jump back into the FileMaker Pro side, just like we expected, the car battery information is there, entered on the FileMaker Go side, displaying in the FileMaker Pro side. Again, it doesn't matter if you're accessing, the, accessing this Mac, Windows, other iOS devices, non-iOS uh, devices, web browsers, everybody's going to see that change uh, in real time, just like we expected. Okay, we did a lot here. We use tools like the field picker, importing, relationships, portals, and calculations to create a solution that matches how we do business. So instead of being flustered with the hundreds of features that we don't use or being limited by software that only handles a fraction of what we need, we're able to have full control over what business processes to integrate. So we're not waiting for IT to build in the changes for us, and we can continue to work at a more productive and efficient rate. All right, so we're almost there, but the last thing I need to do is make sure whether the customer experience is heightened as well. So we're eliminating paper forms, which helped, but I wanna make sure the quote process is as seamless as possible. So I know I can improve how quotes are built, and I can also help shorten the sales process by having quotes sent to the customer the minute they leave my booth so they don't have to worry about losing, misfiling, or simply forgetting about their paper copy. So I'm gonna leverage FileMaker scripts, buttons and calculations to do that. And let's talk about how we can approach that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide this FileMaker Go, again, because we're gonna be making some schema and layout changes, and that always happens in the FileMaker Pro Advanced software. Now, how can we make this a little bit more streamlined, uh, streamlined for the customer experience? Well, we're already solving some problems with uh, this quote building, but wouldn't it be great if we could just click on a button that allow us to grab an item from the inventory list and have it automatically appear in our quote instead of having to enter uh, the quote ID every single time. All right, so in order to do so, it's gonna require two moving parts. One, I need an object that I can click or tap on, okay? So that could be like a button. And then two, I need a script that will perform the action that I want. In this case, grabbing that inventory item and uh, placing it into uh, the uh, quote for us. Well, let's go ahead and focus on the first part. So we're just gonna jump into layout mode and I'm going to draw a button right onto our layout. Okay. You can specify in a button uh, some text or an icon or both a text and icon. There's 140 icons in FileMaker. The best part is if you can't find an icon that conveys the message that you want, you can actually in, uh, import your own icons into FileMaker. Uh, in this scenario, we're just gonna use uh, the plus icon here. Uh, we could format this a little bit more, but uh, in the interest of time, we'll just leave it in its uh, default uh, formatting. So we don't have any uh, actions to tie to this button yet. So let's just go ahead and close this out. And now I'm gonna go ahead and go to the scripts menu and scripts workspace, and we can create a script to attach to our button. We're gonna call this uh, we'll just call this add a quote. All right, now let's take a step back for example, uh, for a second. And some of you may not be familiar with, familiar with the concept of scripts, so what are scripts? Well, in a general sense, you can think of scripts as a set of instructions that fire off in a sequence that produce a result. And in FileMaker, here are all of the script steps that you can use to build scripts that again, will fire off in a sequence that will produce results. So let's say that you had a report that you um, you ran frequently, okay? Well, you can build a script that says, all right, FileMaker, go to this particular layout, um, perform a find for this particular set of uh, records, and then um, go ahead and uh, print those particular set uh, of records. Now, you could manually go to uh, the uh, appropriate layout. You can manually enter find mode, enter the search criteria, then you can manually go to the file menu, select print, uh, select the pages that you wanted, or you could just leverage FileMaker's automation capabilities and have FileMaker perform these tasks for you. Uh, throughout your solution, there's gonna be tedious tasks, uh, there's gonna be repetitive tasks where it just makes more sense to leverage FileMaker to do these things for you instead of you having to um, manually do these, these things yourself. It also makes for the better customer experience. In our scenario, what we wanna do is again, 
capture an inventory item and have it automatically appear in this quote uh, portal all right so the first thing we need to do is capture which inventory item we are actually clicking on now that's going to be a dynamic value right so it's not going to be a static value that we can just code hard code into the script so when you want to capture a dynamic value the script step that you want to use is the set variable script step okay so i'm going to use the set variable script step um, this name is just going to be uh, inventory ID, all right, and then the value is going to be the inventory list inventory ID, okay? So we're telling FileMaker, capture the ID of that uh, uh, inventory record, all right? Now that we have that, the next thing we want to do is jump over into uh, this portal. So let's go ahead and we'll give that uh, this portal object a name, okay? And... We'll just keep this really basic. We'll just call it portal object, okay? So we now named that object. So let's go back to our script, all right? So we have the inventory ID, and now we're going to tell FileMaker go to an object. And what's the object name? Well, it's just called portal object, all right? And once we're in that portal object, we're going to tell FileMaker uh, go to portal row. Go to the last, okay? Now remember that setting we made between the two... Um, quotes and uh, orders table, uh, it, it allowed us to interact with the portal, right? And uh, by doing so, uh, what it does is it also leaves an empty row um, always uh, ready in the portal so that you can start interacting and adding records uh, to that portal. So we're just telling FileMaker, hey, go to that last portal because we're going to start adding a record there. And once you're in that last record, go ahead and um, set the inventory ID field from the orders table okay all right and use the value in that inventory uh, ID variable that we created so it completes a relationship to that inventory table and it will grab that information that we want all right so let's go ahead and save that script all right and we will um, attach it to the button Okay, so button action, uh, perform a script, add quote, we'll click OK, exit the layout. All right, so now if we want to add an item, let's say uh, disk calipers, we can click on the button and just like that, the information automatically appears. Okay, so it's grabbing this value of the six, it's automatically entering it into that last portal row, right? And then because of the relationship that we created, the appropriate information comes through. So now we can just say, okay, we have the disk calipers and we want 10 of these uh, for the store. All right. Same thing on the FileMaker Go side. We bring that up. All right. There's the disk calipers there. All right. If we click on the button, let's say that uh, this time we want to add um, a few uh, exhaust manifold, bring that over, and we can say we want uh, six of these for the store as well and everything is working just like we want on the iOS device. Again, that button, that script, our subtotals and totals, all working without having to recode uh, the solution for iOS. Okay, so we've built out a way to streamline the process for building a quote, but I'd love to have the ability to immediately send a quote out to a customer. Again, once we send that quote out to the customer, in our previous process, that paper form could be uh, lost, uh, misfiled. This way we know for sure that the customer always had it ready and uh, it'll, be, uh, it'll help us out in our follow-up process as well. So in order to send out a quote, it's gonna require the same moving parts that we just uh, uh, Walk through, right? We're going to need an object to click or tap on, and then we're going to need a script to perform that action of building out that quote. Okay, so what I like to do at this time is open up a second file that I created. Again, in the interest of time, all I've done here is cleaned up uh, the button that we were using, and um, I also created a brand new layout that we'll use to send uh, out as uh, the quote, okay? So all I've done is use the same techniques that we've already learned, adding some literal text, uh, adding a, uh, you know, a portal uh, and fields here on the layout. It's just a layout designed to the dimensions of a page so that it'll fit in the uh, PDF that we send out to the customer.
okay? So what we'd like to do at this point is build out a quote that captures uh, what quote we're on, goes to the appropriate um, record in the uh, quote uh, email layout, uh, and then sends an email out uh, to the uh, customer, all right? So first thing we need to do, like we discussed, is grab or create a, um, a button onto the layout, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we let's use some uh, text and an icon this time, okay? So we'll just say uh, send quote, and then we can use um, yeah, just uh, email icon here, okay? So we have a send quote button, but uh, like we discussed previously, this isn't going to do anything. We don't have any actions tied to this particular um, uh, button. So let's go back to the scripts menu, select script workspace. All right, we're going to create a brand new script. And uh, we'll just call this uh, send quote. All right. So the first thing we need to do is capture which quotes we are working on, right? And again, this is something that's not going to be hard coded. All right. We're not always going to, when we run that script, we're not always going to say go to quote one, go to quote two, go to quote three, right? It's going to be a dynamic value. So again, when you want to capture dynamic values, you use that set variable script step. All right. So we'll call this. Um, uh, current quote, all right, and the value will be the uh, quote ID from the quote table, all right. So now that we have uh, the uh, current quote, all right, we're capturing the current quote ID. The next thing we want to do is make sure that we go to uh, the email layout version of the this uh, quote table, all right. So we're going to tell FileMaker uh, go to layout, go to the quote email, okay. And then we're going to uh, perform a find, okay? Now, I only have a, a few records in here, but you could have hundreds of records. We just want to make sure that um, you are always working with the appropriate uh, quote, all right? So we'll say uh, current uh, quote, all right? So once you perform a find for the appropriate record that we're working on, we want, now want to start um, creating that PDF. Now that's going to take a few separate, uh, three separate parts. All right. So first thing we need to create a name because that's going to be dynamic as well. That could be changing every time we build out a quote. Uh, two, we need to save uh, this quote as a PDF, and then three, we need to capture the location of where that PDF was saved so that we can then point uh, the FileMaker email to grab that file. And attach it okay so the first thing we need to do is create a name again that's going to change uh, so we're going to uh, use the set variable script step and um, we'll just call this file name all right and I'm going to tell FileMaker uh, to be uh, quote underscore um, I want to use the current date so we can use a calculation function get current date the problem with using this calculation function, and we do want to use it in the name, is that it's going to produce a result uh, similar to um, similar to this, right? Um, where you have uh, the slashes. Now, why is that a problem? Is because when you save this file, and we tell FileMaker to look for this file later on, it's going to be looking for a file that's located in the folder 6 with the subfolder 29, the subfolder 2016, right? So we're actually going to leverage a second calculation function, all right? It's the substitute function. So we're going to tell FileMaker substitute from the current date value, okay? Um, go ahead and find those slashes and replace it with uh, underscores, okay? So that'll work. And then once we have that, uh, we'll add a uh, .pdf extension, okay? So we're going to have the quote underscore, the current date with underscores that are slashes, .pdf as our file name, all right? So we'll go ahead and click OK. So now that we have that file name, okay, we're going to tell FileMaker, go ahead and uh, save these records as uh, PDF, all right? And the output file that we're going to save, go ahead and... Uh, save the file using the uh, nomenclature that we added in in the uh, set variable scripts up here. Okay, so now that uh, we have saved the PDF, we then need to capture where the PDF was saved so we can later attach it to an email. Okay, so we're going to create another uh, set variable 
a script step or so create another uh, variable so we'll call uh, this uh, we'll just call this PDF path okay and I'm gonna tell FileMaker uh, just go to the uh, default documents path and um, look for the file name uh, that we captured in the uh, previous file name variable. Okay, now a moment here. Why am I just using the get documents path? Because on an iOS device, when you save a uh, like a document or file maker go, when you save a document, it goes to a default uh, documents path. You can't uh, specify a different location. Performing the same script on like a Mac or Windows, for example, then uh, you could specify a location. You could specify a particular folder on a particular drive or like the temp folder, uh, however you wanted to build that out. But in this scenario on the iOS device, it's really straightforward. Okay, so we know it's getting saved to the documents path. So we're telling FileMaker, hey, just go to the documents path and find this particular file that we just uh, saved. Okay, so we have the variable of the PDF path there. Um, before we send that email out, I want to make sure that my user is back on the layout that they started with, right? So that instead of staying on this uh, email version, email layout, uh, I want them to go back to the quote details layout that we were creating. So I'm going to tell um, FileMaker, go back to uh, the original layout, okay? And we'll say perform a find, again, uh, just Putting it safe here. Perform a find for the current quote value that we originally captured um, so that they are always in the uh, uh, same quote that they started in. All right. So now that the user is back in the uh, location that they were in, uh, originally we can now send off that email. All right. So send mail. And uh, I don't want to have to enter the uh, customer's email address manually. So I'm going to tell FileMaker, just go ahead and grab uh, the value in the customer email field. Okay. I don't have like a field that has a, uh, a subject message in there. So I'm just going to add some literal text in here. And we could change this however we want. But um, I'll just call this uh, FileMaker Auto Part Quote. All right. And I don't have a field that just captures a message here as well. So we can add some literal text, but you can take that a step further. Uh, you can specify a calculation in here as well. So maybe you wanted to grab a value from the uh, quote ID field. So it's listed in the message. Or if you want to grab a, uh, a value of like, you know, the address or something, you put in that message here as well. But again, in the interest of time, we'll just add some literal text here that says, thank you for your business. Okay, and then we need to attach the file, and we're going to tell FileMaker, go ahead and grab that PDF uh, that we captured in that uh, PDF path uh, variable. All right, so I think our script looks good here. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll save that script, okay, and we'll now attach it over to the send quote button that we created. All right, so we'll say perform script here, uh, send quote, and I'll click OK. Let's exit this layout. Now what I like to do is jump back over into our FileMaker Go. So give me one second to do that. Okay, so there is the FileMaker Go again. If we click on the Send Quote button, all right, so we have the customer's email address automatically populated in the To section. In the subject, we have FileMaker Auto Parts Quote. We have some literal text, thank you for your business, and we have uh, the PDF quote underscore the current date dot PDF just like we expected. Okay, so what do we do? Well, we use calculations, scripts, and buttons to better the customer experience and shorten the sales process. So I can now go to Kathy and present her with a mobile solution that our field team can access in real time at any trade show wherever they are from the iPad that has all of our information in one centralized location and matches a business workflow that makes sense to us and that betters the overall customer experience. So our trade shows Quote building and follow-ups have become much more efficient leveraging this mobile solution that we just built in under an hour but what about Kathy? How does Kathy benefit? Well, think of the top line and the bottom line we can affect running as a more productive and efficient team. Think about that one more sales call in the office or that one more customer touch of the show. 
then roll that up against the entire sales team across the week and month, and then think about what we could achieve in a year. All right, so we were able to demonstrate a successful deployment of FileMaker and how to quickly tackle a small task. And I'd like to share a quote from one of FileMaker's customers that I think really sums up what we've learned today. George Page is a restaurateur, a cheesemaker, and the owner of Sea Breeze Farm, an organic animal farm. He uses FileMaker to track and understand daily production levels of cows for his dairy operation. In the wine cellar, FileMaker Go has replaced clipboards and is used to enter and track alcohol levels, pH readings, and historic data related to wine lots. His butcher shop uses FileMaker to track orders and deliveries of custom cuts of meat, while FileMaker acts as a point-of-sale system in his restaurant. So he's taken full advantage of FileMaker's platform with fantastic results, and he had this to say. FileMaker Pro helps me easily create custom business solutions for iPad using FileMaker Go. The systems we have now are pleasing to look at, as well as highly functional. And that means our employees genuinely want to use them. And you can read more about George's story on FileMaker's website in the customer story section, along with additional customer stories across multiple industries. All right, some no-brainer next steps. You, you want to start creating your own solutions and you want to start deploying a FileMaker Go. Start off with the FileMaker Pro Trial and FileMaker Go, which you can download off the App Store. FileMaker Pro Trial, you can download off of FileMaker's website. As you're learning to build your solutions, um, watch some videos and explore the Star Solutions on FileMaker's website as well. Uh, the Star Solutions can act as a great springboard uh, for uh, what you want to achieve. They ship with the full version of FileMaker as well as the trial version of FileMaker. There's 16 of the most common tasks that businesses have to perform to meet their goals like content management, invoices, event management, uh, resource scheduling. All of that um, uh, can be handled uh, with the uh, Star Solutions. If you don't have an in-house developer, or if you're kind of under a time crunch, and you want to get up, on, up and running as quickly as possible, or if you just need some help kind of getting over a development obstacle, talk to a specialist, talk to a FileMaker a business lines partner, talk to a FileMaker consultant. Uh, there's a consultants page on FileMaker's website that uh, you can drill down and find a, a, a consultant that uh, may be a great fit for you. But they're the experts. They'll help you get up and running uh, really quickly. Uh, some next steps for FileMaker WebDirect. You want the FileMaker Pro trial again, but you also want to download the FileMaker Server trial. So all of the web components are part of FileMaker Server. So if you want to test this out in the web browser, you definitely need FileMaker Server. Uh, before you start building and deploying, Definitely take the time to uh, read the FileMaker Web Direct Guide. It talks about the best practices, uh, the different behaviors um, in uh, Web Direct. And again, uh, the FileMaker Business Alliance uh, partners, FileMaker consultants uh, can also help you here as well. You can also uh, contact FileMaker's technical support team for uh, some assistance uh, with um, installing and deploying uh, to this technology as well. All right, let's go ahead and open this up to some Q&A. If you haven't already, again, you can enter, uh, go to the go to our uh, webinar control panel, click on the question section, enter your question, and click on send. Um, in the meantime, to give some of you time who haven't already entered a question, let's talk about a few additional resources. So the FileMaker training series, this is fantastic resources for building up that foundational knowledge of FileMaker. There's a free basics guide that kind of walks you through a story like we did today. And then there's a advanced guide. Uh, it's $19.99 off of uh, iBooks, which you can download. And uh, it's broken down in different modules. It goes into some more intermediate and advanced topics like scripting, calculations, methodologies for relationships, FileMaker server, and reporting. So again, these are really great resources for building up your foundational knowledge of FileMaker before you start applying these uh, techniques to your solutions. If you haven't already, definitely join the FileMaker community. Not only do you have access to a really welcoming and opening and highly active developer community, where you can gain some guidance on different approaches, best practices, or some help solving some development problems. But you're gonna have access to a ton of free content, some very valuable content like technical briefs, how-to articles, and white papers. And again, this is all for free, so definitely join the FileMaker community. Finally, again, FileMaker 15, uh, free to download off the App Store, download FileMaker Pro Trial off on uh, FileMaker's website. There's additional webinars that you can view. These are for free as well. A ton of great free content on FileMaker's uh, learning uh, webinars page. 
And you can look at, for additional instructor-led and self-paced training on FileMaker's learning slash uh, training page as well. Okay, and with that, let's go ahead and start jumping into some of your questions. Okay, let's see. Um, we have uh, quite a few people asking about whether you'll get a link to the recording. You will. So after this session is um, uh, over, we'll send you a link to a recording and you can follow along at your own pace. My users out of the office, they don't always have a network connection. Can they use this app? You don't, especially with FileMaker Go, you don't need to have a network connection. If you're planning on a um, mobile solution based off of the web and WebDirect, you'll have to have a network connection. But one of the benefits of uh, using FileMaker Go for, for the iOS is that you can work offline. So you can take databases, store them locally on the device, and then sync those uh, changes back up to um, uh, the hosted solution. You have the local database, you go out in the field, you capture your information, and then you push those changes up to the hosted solution or vice versa. And the sync is really just a scripted import that you write, okay? So you're just essentially saying, hey, take these offline files and the data that I've changed and import those records into the hosted file and vice versa. Um, now, if you're making changes to data that no one else is going to be uh, changing or making changes to records that no one else is going to be changing, that's a pretty straightforward process, right? You're just saying, take these uh, records that I just created or that I just modified and push them up to the hosted file. Now, if you're going to be uh, modifying information that other people may be modifying, so whether it's other offline users or um, other uh, people who are online, if they're making changes, then you have to incorporate some business logic into your script, right? Um, because your script isn't automatically going to do that. So you'll have to determine in script whose information are you going to keep? Is it based off of you know, uh, time? Is it based off of who they are in the company and things like that? Now there are software out there that kind of take the responsibility of creating this script out of your hands or this sync out of your hands. So I'm thinking about uh, 360 Works, their developer, they've created uh, Mirror Sync, uh, Seed Code, they've created um, GoZync. Um, do a quick online search for, C for uh, GoZync or Mirror Sync. Uh, they have some great uh, videos as well on YouTube that you can kind of uh, view and get an idea of how they work and how to set them up. But those are uh, uh, two good choices that you can use to uh, uh, deploy with this sync. All right, so the next question, can you touch on the differences between iOS and the web version? Well, it's true that with WebDirect, you can actually um, deploy on a uh, iOS device or an Android device, right? A mobile uh, phone or a, uh, a mobile tablet. But FileMaker Go also allows you to uh, access your solution via the iOS. Now, between the two, um, the best experience will be FileMaker Go. What I mean by best experience is that FileMaker Go takes advantage of um, things more native to the iOS device, like gestures, for example. The ability to leverage the iOS device's camera and scan barcodes, uh, different uh, keyboard types. So as you're building a solution, uh, you want to deploy with FileMaker Go, that's going to... Um, give you the best native experience. Okay, the next questions, um, all right, uh, actually about barcodes. Okay, I want to build a solution that allows me to scan packages using the iOS device. Can you talk about barcodes? Sure. So you can leverage the iOS device to scan a barcode, and you can also scan a barcode using a third-party um, handheld device as well. Now, regardless of which device you use, there are um, a few moving parts that are similar. One, FileMaker doesn't have a native barcode font, so you have to create a barcode font um, if you want to create your own barcode labels. Now, there's plugins available that allow you to do that. Um, there's also a FileMaker barcode um, add-on that doesn't use a, a plugin that allows you to create barcodes. So if you want to create your own labels, you have to um, go to a third-party um, vendor to uh, incorporate that into your solution. Then, uh, once you scan that um, barcode, you can bring uh, the return value into a field, and then you can use calculations or scripts to parse the information out and uh, perform a task. So you could create a brand new record. You could find a new record and add it to a list. 
uh, things like that. And then you can choose uh, which device you want to use. Again, is it going to be the iOS device's um, camera or is it going to be a third party handheld? Now, for um, scenarios where you're going to be um, tasked with filling up, you know, like a um, an order uh, really quickly and it's a fast paced uh, moving environment, um, the handheld device is probably going to be the best option. It's just a, a faster scan. But um, for other scenarios where you know you're, it's not in a rush, but um, it's still pretty efficient, then you can go the iOS uh, camera route. Uh, the next question, will I have to do anything different if I go with the cloud version? No, so, um, so FileMaker Cloud, we, re we recently released uh, back in September, and uh, this is essentially, instead of having the FileMaker server software, which is a software application you install on a dedicated machine like in your office and you're managing it um, you know, on premise, we have the FileMaker Cloud, which is essentially just the FileMaker, Cloud, uh, FileMaker server components bundled with an instance of Amazon um, Web Services, right? So it's up in, you know, uh, quote unquote, the cloud. So once your databases are hosted from there, your users, the user experience is, is uh, going to be the same. They, they they won't know that they're accessing a server that's in the cloud or a server that's in your office. So from their experience, everything's going to be the same. The only difference really would be um, where you're managing it, whether it's on-premise or in the cloud. And there's different um, uh, features that are supported and not supported, like um, uh, custom web publishing or with PHP and XML, that's not supported in the cloud. Active Directory, that's not supported in the cloud. Um, but the cloud takes advantage of, you know, the Amazon Web uh, Services uh, infrastructure. So we can do um, uh, on-demand uh, snapshot restores of um, files. So uh, advantages to both, but from the user standpoint, uh, I, they're not gonna be aware that they're accessing a cloud or a, uh, a on-premise uh, server. Next question, how many users can I have accessing the solution? So we tested and certified um, 250 for FileMaker Pro, 200 for FileMaker Go, and 100 um, WebDirect. But the user count will also depend on the licensing that you purchase. So we have FileMaker licensing for Teams, where every user requires a user connection. So if you purchase 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, for example, you can only have uh, that amount of users connected and for specific users. We also have a concurrent connections model based on the maximum number of estimated users. So you could have a pool of 500 users, for example, but if you purchased uh, 25 concurrent connections, any combination of those 500 users could access your solution up to uh, 25. All right, uh, that's all the time we have for today. On behalf of FileMaker, it was my absolute pleasure chatting with you guys. Definitely hope you learned something, and I hope to see all of you soon on a, another webinar. Have a great day.